Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating a very, very simple XML gallery. Consider this the XML gallery for yourself if you've, number one, never worked with XML or Flash and XML before. And uh, number two, if you've never created an XML gallery before, just a very simple XML gallery. This one's going to take a little bit of time. However, before we actually go diving through it, let's just take a look at what we are creating. So if it doesn't fit your needs, you don't have to sit here through this video only to realize uh, we're not creating something you can use. So I'm going to hit Control Enter here to test my movie in Flash. You can see it immediately loads up the first image, and to get to any other images, you just click that image, and it loads the other images in the Flash XML document. In this case, there are only five images. However, the beauty of this gallery is that you can keep adding to that XML file, and it's going to keep expanding this gallery. And because it's loading in XML, you don't need a huge preloader for your gallery because the images are not all loaded at once. As the user clicks this image, then the next image is loaded. So you don't have to worry about a thousand and one images being loaded in one shot and taking forever to load. It's a very quick loading XML gallery, so it's very cool because because of that, it only loads what the user is uh, clicking to see next. Now, if you want, you could add text on your own or whatever somewhere that says, hey, just click anywhere, and really you can click anywhere, to go ahead and advance to the next photo. And you can see it's just a very simple XML gallery, and uh, that's basically what we're going to take a look at doing. Now, in order to be able to do this, you need Flash CS3 or greater because we're using ActionScript 3.0. Anything before Flash CS3, ActionScript 3.0 just wasn't there, so you need that. And again, because we're using this XML, the way this gallery is going to work is basically as you add to the XML, the gallery is going to expand to fit the fit everything from that XML into it. So it's a really, really cool gallery. Stop this video and go saving all of your images. What I recommend you do is save all the images as, you know, image 1, image 2, image 3. And the way I do it is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, on and on and on, dot .jpg. So speedboat.jpg here, I would just, you know, save it and just basically name it 1. .jpg, and that's it. I'm not going to save it as 1.jpg. I want to do it in a slightly different order. But again, the order you do it in really doesn't matter. So any order you like. Go ahead and let's save all these images from image 1 to all the way up to 10. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention is really you want all these images, you want the XML file, and then the Flash file all within the same folder. So we're all going to keep them in here with this folder with these 10 images. The XML file is going to be in here and our FLA file. All of, all of that is just going to keep everything simple because the XML is going to reference these images and the Flash file is going to reference that XML file. So as long as they're all in the same folder, it's going to keep it simple for us. And just remember that when you go upload this to the web, all these images in the XML file and the Flash file, they all have to be within the same folder so Flash knows where it's reaching out to grab the images from. Very, very important. There you go. We have done that. I'm going to enter or, return, enter or return a few more times in there, and I'm going to hit the tab key to just indent one. Now we're going to create the first child inside of this initial tag, and it's just simply going to be called image. Enter or return a couple times, hit tab one more time, and uh, type slash image, just like that. Now each of these image bits or children is going to contain four pieces of information, or actually for children within themselves. The first one is going to be called IMG title and this is just going to be a, a, a string, just a line of text basically describing the image. This is you know completely optional. We're actually not even going to use this here in this tutorial. I'm just doing this because I'm thinking maybe later on down the road I'll do a tutorial on how to include some sort of a caption with this gallery or something like that. Okay. The second thing hit tab a couple times, is the image URL. This is the actual location of the image. Now, because we're going to have this document saved, which reminds me to save this document, because we are going to have this document saved in the same folder as all of our images, we don't need to say, you know, this slash, this folder slash this folder, or anything like that. We can just immediately reference the file, which for the first image is going to be 1.jpg, and that's it. Close that tag by doing that open bracket slash IMG URL in all in caps. All right, so we have two of the children for our this flash gallery can extend to take you know these 10 images, or if we had 20 or 30 or 40, it would do that too. So we're going to be working with image data.xml. And again, as I mentioned several times now, if you have if you bought this file, you have both of these XML files uh, that you can play with, as well as these 10 images that I'm using here. So what we're going to do is go ahead now and jump into Flash, finally, after all of this chatter and XML nonsense, and we're actually going to start building this uh, gallery here in Flash. It's in the screen, and we are now ready to start writing our action script. Great. 
So we have, I don't know, roughly 55 lines of code to write for this XML gallery, and don't let that overwhelm you. We're going to break it off in small bite-sized pieces and try to understand each little bit of action script as we go. So when you go back and you look at this and you need to make edits later on down the road, it's not totally confusing, and I'm going to be really upfront with you. Uh, the way we're going to go through this, it might seem kind of confusing, and it may take you a few tries to really get your head wrapped around it, but just stick with it. Just stick with me, and uh, we'll get through it. So this loader is going to load this URL, that this URL is going out there and you know taking care of that. So we have our first two variables declared. Great. Uh, well, I need to declare one more variable here on line three at var, and this one is just going to be called img data, and this is just an XML variable. It's it's a variable that's going to contain XML data. All right, great. So now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and add an event listener to this URL. Beautiful. I'm going to hit enter or return, and look at this. Look at our output panel. We have here. Hey, I don't want to include it in my actions panel. We have here an output panel that is basically just showing me all that stuff I just typed in that XML file. That is wonderful. Well, as you can see here. Our image has loaded, but it's not centered on stage. I want these images to automatically center themselves on stage based on the size of the image. Well, if you remember when we wrote the XML file, we actually included a width and height of the images uh, right there in the XML file. Now, you may be wondering how that's going to help us. Well, mathematically, we can figure out based on the size of the stage, width and height, and the size of the image, we can center these things. Now, remember, this also bases itself off of the registration point of this master underscore MC. Remember when we created that movie clip, I pointed out that it was very, very important that we set that registration point to the top left corner because that is the point from which this centering is going to be measured, if you will. So important that we did that. All right, now that we are up to this point of centering, we need to go ahead and declare two more variables. All right, so we're going to say var and let's call this raw h for height. And uh, this is oh, this is going to be a string. My keyboard slid on me there. And we're going to say var raw w. And uh, this also is a string. Place a semicolon at the end. And uh, there we go. We've declared those two variables. Now we need to come down into here and right beneath raw image, let's you know hit enter return to drop in a line of code. All right. Now we're going to say okay raw w. Let's start with raw w. You are going to be equal to img data dot image again those brackets just straight brackets img num so again we're basing whatever child off of whatever this number is equal to at this current moment in time so dot image image num dot img w place a semicolon at the end and we can actually just duplicate this whole line of code copy command or control C enter return once command or control V to paste that in place change raw W to raw H and image H over here on the very end now uh, we're just going to trace these two numbers so I'm going to enter a little trace statement trace open close parenthesis uh, semicolon and here inside of the parentheses I'm going to say raw W comma raw H and let's see what shows up. All right, so we can see 630 and 420 show up. Great, because that is the width and height of this image. All right, now that we've done that, we also just want to, as a little bonus, we're just going to type master underscore mc dot button mode, space equals space true. What button mode is going to do is basically it's a movie clip, right? So when you roll over, you don't get that little finger, the, you know, the index finger. It doesn't give you the finger. Um, we want it to give our users the finger, the index finger, that is. And uh, this does that. Which is very convenient. Let's uh, save this. Control Enter, Command Return, and we have an error. Access of an undefined property next IMGF. That's because we haven't created that function. All right. So before I get to show you uh, Flash giving us the finger, the index finger that is, I want to be very clear about that. Uh, let's go ahead and just define this function. So F9 to open up our Actions panel again, and right below here, I'm just going to create a new function. Well, function next. IMG and notice IMG has a capital I. Every word other than the first word in most of my variables and everything I do in Flash, uh, I capitalize. You know the the second, third, fourth, and on and on and on words. Uh, so next IMG F and uh, this is an event. It is a mouse event. Close parenthesis colon the word void open curly bracket enter return a couple times close curly bracket up arrow key and we're just going to trace uh, the statement. You clicked. 
exclamation point, close parenthesis, semicolon. All right, great. So now let's test the movie. Great. When I click this, you can see it's you know doing that little finger thing. All right, when I click, it says, hey, you clicked. So here, what we need to do is come down into here and right beneath raw image, all right, this line right here, we want to uh, enter a line of code. And that line of code is going to be, hey, number of children is going to be equal to IMG data. Uh, don't throw that extra A in there. IMG data dot, and here's where things get a little interesting, asterisk, which is just a wildcard selector. So just any child inside of IMG data dot length. There we go. Open and close parenthesis and uh, semicolon. So the cool thing about this here is we're going to trace trace number of children. Close parenthesis, semicolon. All right, let's see what happens. And you can see it says five. There are five children here. Great, because I happen to remember that when I typed that XML document, I included five images. Curly bracket up arrow key. In here, we're going to say image loader dot unload semicolon. On the next line, we're going to say, go ahead and reset IMG num to equal space, equal space, zero, semicolon. And last but not least, go in there and play packaged F one more time. Okay, so this is our if and else if statement set up right here. And as long as I figured that out correctly uh, in my mind here, uh, we will not throw any errors. Let's just check to make sure we don't have any errors here. Uh, we'll see if we have any errors when we actually test this. But we can't, where we don't want to test it quite yet because it's still not going to work. And just add one number to it. So IMG num plus plus, and then a semicolon. So now that we've done all of that, when I hit enter or return, don't throw any errors, and when I click, you can see it loads the next image. Click, it loads the next image. Click, it loads the next image. Click one more time, it loads the last image. Now when I click, it should go back to the beginning and load the first image again. Very, very cool.